welcome to another episode of the A-List Movie Club. I am your host, the Game Changer, Wes True. And with me, as always, are Dominic and John. How's it going tonight, guys? Good. All good. Good. All right. And uh, this is the show where, of course, each week one of us picks a different movie uh, for the others to check out. And this week it was my turn. And I chose the 1993 action comedy, The Last Action Hero. Your cover is way. <laughs> huh? Your cover is way better than this. Oh, the steel book? Yeah, I don't have it with me, but I like this. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This. What the hell is this? They just released a 4K that looks just like that. And everyone's like, I want the steel book, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. Danny Madigan, a teen in New York City, uses his local movie theater as an escape from reality, especially enjoying the Jack Slater action series, an L.A. detective played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Thanks to a magical ticket from Nick the Projectionist, which he was given to as a boy by Houdini, Danny finds himself in Jack Slater 4, partnered up with Jack, who believes that he's a real character, and they go to stop a gang of mobsters. So this was directed by John McTiernan, who we also did a review of Die Hard. He did that film, uh, Predator and the Hunt for Red October. And the film was released on June 18th, 1993. Wow, we're one day off of its anniversary. Isn't that weird? <laughs> yeah, wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll start it off. To begin with, I love action movies. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger action movies. Um, he was one of my favorites when I was younger. I every. Schwarzenegger movie I, that came out I went to the theater to see <laughs> and this was no exception I went to the theater and saw this um, I enjoyed it immensely I remember I enjoyed it a lot when I was younger when this came out um, I, 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 I love the fact that it's it's kind of lampooning the action film thing and uh, with the over-the-top explosions and things. And um, it's funny because my favorite part of the movie is when an ice cream truck explodes and a guy gets impaled in the back of the head with an ice cream cone. I love that. I thought that was just hysterical. Great direction. And speaking of uh, 4Ks, um, I, I this was a movie that was made for 4K. I mean, it looked, it was yeah. just... It was beautiful on, on, on the screen. Um, my only complaint with it is I think it was about probably about a half an hour too long. Um, I think they dragged out some things a little bit. Um, and I, I don't remember feeling that the first time I saw it, but this, this time um, I found my, uh, my interest wandering. Um, it near the like not the middle but like the probably two thirds of the way through it like come on let's let's just get wrap this up already you know um but otherwise i love the movie i i really do you know uh yeah i remember seeing this when it came out so god 93 i would have been like 15 okay so i'm like 15 16 uh, i don't know if i can 1993, I was 30. <laughs> I graduated in 95, so I was probably uh. 15. <laughs> um, I remember liking it, but sort of not getting it. Mm. I wasn't, you know, like now I have more knowledge of film, I guess. But back then I was like, okay, I don't get it. Like, so watching it now as an adult, I like it more than I did back then. Mm. And I didn't hate it back then. I just was like confused, I guess. So, yeah, I remember uh, thinking it was sort of dumb and there's all these mistakes and I'm like, what is going on? Uh, 
But now that I know that those are intentional, now I look at it differently. Like, oh, like, like Tom, it's like a parody of Schwarzenegger films, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you suspend your disbelief and just be entertained for two hours, it's not bad. Right. Not bad, not as worse. And I, I think this kind of shows the kind of guy Arnold is for making fun of himself and parodying himself. I think that's cool. I don't know if I ever told you this, John. I met Arnold Schwarzenegger twice. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice, wow. really nice guy. Really nice guy. Um, yeah, I, I think that just shows the kind of person he is that he can make fun of himself, you know, and not take himself too seriously. You know, somebody like Stallone would never do this type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, way too serious about his career or whatever. Right, right. So. How was okay. when you met Arnold? Like, how big is he in person? Um, the, uh, the first time I met him, he uh, just came out with his book, Arnold Portrait of a Bodybuilder. And I met him at a, a book signing. And it, he's not that incredibly tall, but he was huge. Oh, my God. He had this flannel shirt on that I think that if he would have made it, you know, flexed, he would, it would have been incredible Hulk time and just tore out of it. Yeah. You know? Wow. Because that's back when he was winning the Mr. Olympias and shit like that. Yeah, he's not tall. He's like as big as a house. Like, he's a big guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you ever see the photo of him when they were making Conan the Barbarian, uh, the second one? No. And they have a photo of him next to Next to uh, uh, Andre the Giant and Wilt Chamberlain, and he looks like a little kid. <laughs> it's hysterical. Well, yeah, those two are taller than him. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. I'm just gonna say now, but <laughs> sorry. Uh, I like the stuff like you said, Dom. Like I like the completely ridiculous, over the top, like every car that hit something explodes for no reason yep. <laughs> like you know he goes to his apartment and there's a guy in a closet and oh, there's always a guy in there like, <laughs> like as a kid i was like that's dumb that's making any sense now I'm like oh that's funny like now i get it yeah mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I agree yeah i i like it more as a comedy parody than i do as like a straight up action film oh yeah that's yeah. That, that's the way i took it too you yeah. know and yeah. you know the, the 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 villains were over the top, you know, with the guy with the glass eye, and <laughs> and, and and then the the guy that's the, the you know who was the guy with the axe or whatever his name the was. Ripper, yeah, yeah. And, I mean that was just uh, he was pretty freaky, man. He was kind of scary, but yeah. uh, but I love <laughs> the I love the guy with the glass eye, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't recognize that that's Charles Dance. Yeah. Because I've only ever seen him as an old man. <laughs> In like the Underworld movies and stuff like that. All right. At first I was like, wait, is that the guy from Thor? Is that the Malekith? And then I'm like, no, 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 that's not him. Different guy. What they look yeah. like. <laughs> oh, was it Tim Roth? No, that was, uh, I know who you mean. Yeah. Uh, Eccleston, Christopher Eccleston. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you just I liked that the kid was was us. Like all the stuff that you would say, like, no, yeah. why would that car blow up for no reason? Like this the kid would you know, we lived through him, I guess, is the way you want to say, you know. Right. I, I like that the kid knew what was gonna happen and all this stuff. Yeah, it was great. It's funny. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good for Arnold to poke fun of himself. I like was it what's the word meta? Is that the word? Very meta. Yeah, fourth yeah. wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was enjoyable. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, so I had the action figures 
from this movie when I was a kid. <laughs> Which, of course, the Arnold one, uh, the kid, and uh, the Ripper, I think. I don't know if there were any more, but those were the three I had, at least. Um, yeah, I loved all the puns, because I, I, <laughs> I love action movie puns, especially Arnold. So this was a whole fest of them. Um, I like that it's a satire, very smart and clever humor. Um, like you guys said, making fun of action, the action movies of its time. Uh, and, you know, it has some pretty decent action scenes of its own and nice stunt work. Um, lots of good laughs, a lot of uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge jokes, like uh, Sylvester Stallone in T2 at the video store. And like when both Arnold actually meet and Maria Shriver being in it is a little bit awkward now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I really liked um, the premise of Danny going into the movie world and going on the case with his hero. Uh, I like the cameos, Sharon Stone, uh, the Robert Patrick from T2. I missed um, that movie. Yeah, the Blink and You Miss Them cameos. I, um, I've been looking at my phone and went to the bathroom. I didn't even know they were in this movie. I completely missed them. Oh, man. <laughs> and Ian McKellen is death. I, I said to Dominic, I'm like, is, is that Ian McKellen? Yeah. <laughs> Where now, is Ian McKellen? Yes. now, let me tell you about that. <laughs> that, that. That scene where he came out of that movie, that was a movie called The Seventh, I think it's The Seventh Seal. Mm-hmm. It's an Ingmar Bergman movie, I believe. I believe it was him. And it's where he, death and an old knight, a knight, you know, are playing chess. And if the perfect if, Ian McKellen, the whole movie is that it's him and death playing chess. And if death wins, he, the the knight dies. If he, if the knight wins, he doesn't have to die. It took place took place during the uh, during the Black Plague. Oh. Mm. That's a very <laughs> it's a very, very good movie. Uh, yeah. Um, I thought it started out great, but like Dominic, exactly, like around 60% of the way, I thought it like lost a little bit of some steam. Um, it almost felt like I was watching a director's cut. <laughs> like that maybe they could have you know spent a little less time in the movie world once everything was set up uh before coming back to the real world um i thought they kind of brought the secondary villain in a little too late when it feels like some of the stuff had, was about ready to wrap up but it was, it was almost like all right let's get this guy back into it that we now that we have 20 more minutes left in the movie <laughs> It's like, huh? <laughs> but, um, and man, they did they do some teasing with who they could have brought in when they're like Dracula, Freddy Krueger. I'm like, <laughs> but I think that would have been a little too much, really. But it would have been cool, though. But, uh, but yeah, I, I had a good time with it. You got some trivia there, Johnny? Sure do. <laughs> um, filming continued until the week before the movie hit theaters. Wow. Uh, they didn't have time to edit it shorter. <laughs> yeah. That might be why. <laughs> Arnold thought the script was one of the best he'd ever read. He liked the elements of comedy and action and drama and satire. See, he got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, Charles Dance said in interviews after being told that he'd won a part that was originally written for Alan Rickman. Rickman turned it down. Oh, man. Because of the salary, he wore a t-shirt on set which said, I'm cheaper than Alan Rickman. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Arnold wanted the movie to be PG-13 so it would appeal to a broader audience. Uh, being executive producer... He had approval over script, director, cast, studio financing, distribution, marketing, budget, PR, time, foreign release, etc. He had almost complete control. 
Wow. Wow. Uh, they originally had toys for this movie that had guns, and Arnold said no. He wanted to be appeal to kids, and not be you know guys with guns. I think I think I, mine had dynamite. <laughs> I think he had like a hand that like launched dynamite or something. Wow. Ah. So I guess that's okay. <laughs> uh, merchandising included seven different video games. A twenty million dollar Burger King promotion, a thirty six million dollar theme park ride. Where? NASA, I have no idea. It's all oh. <laughs> NASA's first paid ad in space, and a four story inflatable Jack Slater at the Cannes Film Festival, which this movie would not do well there at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Pulp Fiction, yes. No, this not. <laughs> yeah. This isn't arty enough for the people. Yeah. Uh, Arnold gave 40 television interviews and 54 print interviews in 24 hours. Oh. Uh, the ACDC song heard in here, Big Gun, was written especially for this movie. Arnold approached the band and asked them if they'd write a song. Imagine having that kind of power. I'm going to call up ACDC. See if I'll do a song. That's awesome. Um, Sharon Stone originally did not want to do her cameo because her and Arnold didn't get along on Total Recall. I, uh, I, I heard that uh, rumor, yeah. So Arnold reminded her that she wouldn't have her career if not for Total Recall. So that she agreed to do it. It's <laughs> <laughs> kind of a I mean, move she don't have much of a career now either. <laughs> she stopped taking her clothes off. People stopped caring. Well, she got to be 60 and people stopped caring. <laughs> um, when his house explodes mm -hmm. and the two cops die and Arnold gets away with like a scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, when the black cop says two days to retirement, that's a nod to Lethal Weapon. Okay. Danny Glover's character. Yep. <laughs> so if you listen closely, you can hear the Lethal Gun, Lethal Gun, Lethal Weapon theme playing in the background of that cop is saying that line. Oh, wow. Um, this, like you already said, Danny says to Jack about checking if they're dead because just like Die Hard, they're not always dead. That was an in-joke because he directed Die Hard. Uh, says so if you listen closely, you can hear the Die Hard theme playing in the background of that scene. Oh, oh wow. Um, this is considered Arnold's first real failure after how many in a row? Arnold considers it the beginning of the end of his movie career. Wow. Didn't do well in theaters or with critics. Uh, well, they're in a video store. If you look behind Arnold, you can see videos for Die Hard, Hunt for Red October, and Medicine Man, all of which were directed by John McTiernan. And the blonde girl in the movie, in that scene, that gives up her phone number, is mm -hmm. played by Bobby Brown. Uh, Dom, you might know she was the Cherry Pie Girl. Cherry Marcia. Pie video, yep. Yep. She also married Jenny Lane. Um, this was Art Carney's final appearance <laughs> on screen. Yeah. And the last words he said were, I'm out of here. That's weird, yeah. Um, the director thinks that it opening a week after Jurassic Park killed this movie. Oddly enough, <laughs> look at the shirt I'm wearing. <laughs> it even overshadows it in our review. <laughs> um, the teacher that mentions about watching Hamlet is played by Joan Plowright who was married to Laurence Olivier, who was in that movie Hamlet she was showing. Ah. I, I knew she was familiar. I'm like, she had to play like a grandma in, in some movies from the 90s that I know or something. <laughs> um, the movie was originally titled Extremely Violent. <laughs> By who? <laughs> when, the, when the script was written, that's what it was called. Oh, okay. 
Um, Arnold had a choice between this movie or a Penny Marshall directed comedy called Sweet Tooth, which I've never heard of. No, uh, he picked this. They never shot that one. Uh, written by Shane Black, who went on to whatever. What did he direct to us? You know, <laughs> Iron Man Three, The Nice Guys. Yeah, he's still yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's an in joke that all the props in the movie are made by the Acme Company. Yep. In joke the Roadrunner. <laughs> um, there's a, a mistake if you noticed in the movie theater in the movie theater in the movie's video store, as they're leaving, there's a video of Raw Deal on one of the shelves with Arnold on the cover of it. Okay. Um, the girl that played his daughter that the kid said this is her first movie. Right. The actress's first movie as well. She was in uh, the original Mortal Kombat. Yeah, Bridget Wilson Samper. Yeah. Isn't she the teacher. one in Billy Madison too? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. teacher. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. And Angie Everhart was the girl at the video store behind the counter when he's like, oh, these girls are too pretty to work here. Uh -huh. The explosion of Jack Slater's ex-wife's house was the exact same explosion from Last Boy Scout. <laughs> oh, so you placed it in? Yeah. Copy and paste. Uh, the police station is the lobby of an administration building for Sony Pictures. It was also used in The Running Man. Hmm. Uh, the movie ran so far behind schedule they had one test screening which ran for two hours and 20 minutes <laughs> with a lot of inaudible dialogue the audience was bored oh. the studio refused to delay the opening figuring that would send the wrong message to the audience so they released it as is oh that wonder didn't do well what the hell <laughs> yeah really Um, they filmed from 3 in the afternoon until 3 a.m., seven days straight in Times Square. Uh, there was a 75-foot balloon of Arnold Schwarzenegger that had three sticks of dynamite. But after the World Trade Center bombings, they took that down and put a badge in his hand. Um, critics say the movie didn't do well because fans didn't get it. And they didn't like the fact that Arnold made fun of himself. And that it wasn't a straight action film, which fans expected from Arnold at the time. Uh, the original version had the old projectionist Nick to be the devil. And they got rid of that idea. <laughs> uh, this was Tina Turner's last film. Mm. She played the mayor or whatever. Mm. Let's rate this pig. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Um, my only real complaint was that I think it was just a little bit too long. Um, I'm waffling between a seven and an eight. Um, man, eight just seems a little too high for me, so I'm going to go with a seven. I was thinking six. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to agree with Dominic and go with the set. All righty. <laughs> All right. So that is the last action hero. Uh, this time it is Dominic's turn to pick. What do you have in store for us this time? Gentlemen, say hello to my little friend. We're going to do the movie Scarface with Al Pacino and Stephen Bauer and Elizabeth Master Men of 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 Men yeah, uh, man, when I, I, 
I, I, I love this movie. I absolutely love this movie. Again, it's another one that's over the top. Uh, Al Pacino is hysterical because he goes so over the top in his portrayal of Tony Montana. And uh, it's just a great, great gangster flick. That's your third gangster movie pick. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I know what's next. I like Gangster gang- Squad. I like, gang- <laughs> I like gangster flicks. All right. All right. Uh, we'll be back with our review of that next week. John, you want to talk a little bit about your podcast? Call me back. <laughs> <laughs> we like wrestling podcasts. Uh, it's a weekly podcast. Four guys sitting around talking about wrestling, um, current events. Uh, classic pay-per-view reviews, tournaments, anything wrestling related, we talk about it. We're on uh, Spotify, Apple iTunes, wherever you find podcasts. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and now apparently we're on YouTube. I didn't even know that. <laughs> uh, we like wrestling podcasts. All right. Awesome. And of course, for me, you can subscribe right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash westside of 515. Like show on Facebook, facebook.com slash West True Bayless. And of course, you can follow me on the Twitter and the Instagram at West Aiden. Until next time, Troop out. <laughs>